In this video, we'll see the multi-view drawings of this object. So how we could easily construct the views of this object on a multi-view drawing. So this is just the given object as a 3D or as a, an isometric view and then it has its own layout. So every detail dimensions are given here and then all the units are given in millimeter here. If such types of objects are given to you to be projected in a multi-view drawing, so how we could just construct it will be discussed here in detail. Normally, I will show you the basic steps and the basic procedures related to them. In this case, we will project it by using the first angle projection system. But later on, I will show you even the layouts of the views in the third angle projection system. If you want to know more about what first angle and third angle projection system, so you can refer on the link attached on the video description here. Before constructing a multi-view drawing of this object, first we have to understand all the features related to this object. And then at the same time, we have to know in which angle of projection we are trying to project it. So in this case, this is a first angle projection. So which one will be the front view for this part? Now, to be a front view, there is different criteria. You might refer the videos related to this. Some of the criteria might be like the object, look for the best shape or the most contrast and display the most informatic view. And then it shows the most natural positions of the object to use and then provide the longest dimension containing the least hidden future and etc. So different criteria will be apply for selecting the front view and sometimes the front view even will be given to you this one is just as a front view but if it is not given you might just use such types of criteria to know which one is a front view so in this case this part this will be a front view because it has a long dimension and it gives us more information especially it will give us a circular part that means it's a special feature rather than the other surfaces here so in this case I will just select this one as a front view. So if this is the front view, the next views will be top view and then the side view. That means you will select for the adjacent view. So the adjacent views should be also give enough information related to the object. For example, if this is the right side view, so we are trying to prefer this as a right side view. But if, instead of that, if you just prefer that be on the back of this object, all those features will be hidden and then it might not give you information related to that and then it might not be even helpful just to construct the dimensioning of this object once we complete the multi-view drawing and then for the other view we'll select the top view instead of the bottom view because the top view will give us enough information rather than the bottom of the object so the three principal views are selected as this as a front view this as a right side view as this one and as a top view if such types of objectives could be constructed on your paper you have to just use your paper wisely you have to put all the views as much as possible at the center of the working places of your paper and then to do that first just understand which surfaces will be a front view and which surfaces will be for the other adjacent view to make it simple let me show you with this comparison assume this is a prism box and then the front view will be placed over this plane and then let's say this plane is a vertical plane and then for the right side view we can use the profile plane this is a profile plane and then for the top view we can use this horizontal plane so we have three planes here for constructing this prism and then once you just arrange all the surfaces parallel to this one there will be just as of this plane that means if the object is parallel to this vertical plane that means the surface will be constructed on the front view and then if it is parallel to the profile plane it will be as a side view and then if it is parallel to the horizontal plane it will be as a top view so in this case all the surfaces which is parallel to this one will be a front view so from the front direction if you look over here surface one two three and four are parallel to this vertical plane so all the surfaces will be placed over this so all the four surfaces will be a front view and then for the other part surface 5 6 and 7 are parallel to the horizontal plane that means its layout will be on the top view and then for the other case surface 8 9 and 10 are parallel to the profile plane so they will be projected on the right side view 
So once you just understand this, let me show you with a 3D modeling technique to show you all the necessary information related to which one is a front view, which one is a side view, and which one is a top view. So this is just a 3D modeling technique. And then if you just a little bit rotate this object into this way, you will see a front view of this part. That means when you just arrange it, you can see all the surfaces. Surface one, two, three, and four are projected in this way. So the front view is this. So we are just trying to construct this one as a front view. And then for the top view, if you just rotate this part into this way, just let's tilt in this way and then rotate in this one. So this can be the top view. That means if you are just looking from the top, you'll see surface five, six, and seven here. That means all the surfaces will be this one. So all the surfaces will be constructed into this way. So the three surfaces will be projected as a top view. So we are constructing a view from the top side. And then for the right side view, if you just rotate and tilt into this way, you will see these three surfaces. That means surface 8, 9, and 10 will be seen clearly from the right side view. But don't forget that there is also a surface here. So this surface will be also a parallel to the profile plane here. But since it is not visible to us, we'll show it with a hidden line and then we'll follow all the precedence of line that means the visible line will take the priority and then the hidden line will come and then the center line will come after that in addition to this surface there is also a hole from the circular part here so that should be also projected on the right side view and on the top view we'll see it step by step but i hope you visualize all the views related to the front the side and the top view so once you visualize that we have to know the space required for each view since we are using a first angle projection system, if the front view is placed over here, the top view will be on the bottom, and then the right side view will be placed on the left of the front view. So if that is, the layout seems like this one. So if you put front here, side will be here, top will be here. So if that is the case, so their space will be this rectangle. That means this rectangle will have a horizontal length of this much and then the vertical length is of this much. In this case, for a front view, we have from here to here, we have 100 millimeter because this is 60 from here to here and then this is 40. If you sum up, it will be 100. And then for the height, the total height of this object is 60. So it will be just 60. And then there's a thing between the views, there should be a space for dimensioning. So for that case, we'll use just 10 millimeter or 20 millimeter. In this video, I will show you with a space of 20 millimeter between the view. That means between the right side view and the, the front view, there is 20. And then between the top and the front, there is 20 millimeter gap. So if we have that, we have to construct into that way. And then when we come to the top view, the top view will have the height of the depth of the object. That means the depth is 50. So the height of the top view is the depth of that object and it will be 50. And then the width of the top view is just at the same as the front view. They are the same. So we can construct into this way. And then the other thing for the right side view, the width of the right side view is just the same as the depth of the object. That's a 50 here. So it will be just 50 here. So once we have that, we'll have this rectangle. This rectangle has a horizontal of 170 millimeter length and a vertical of 130 millimeter if you sum up all those things so how we could just put this rectangle at the center of your working plane so to do that first of all you have to construct a border line and then the title block just like this one so this place is a working space you can construct the multi-view drawings over this they should be placed at the center of this and then to get that center we can just connect the diagonals of your working space just like this one if you connect from here to here and then they will connect at this point once you get this point this is the center of your working place you will put the previous rectangle that means having a horizontal of 170 and a 130 at the center to make that half of the horizontal that means half of 170 will be 85 so half of that will be constructed in this way and then half of will be on the right side and for the vertical part, half of 130, which is 65, will be constructed on the upper and then the lower part at this one. So once you have this, you will construct this rectangle. That means this rectangle is just the space of all the views. 
So once you do that, we'll just put all the values on this rectangle. That means for a front view, since the front view will be placed over here, from here to here, we'll measure 100 and then we'll have a vertical line and then we'll give a space 20 millimeter from here to here and then we'll have that vertical line. So we can construct all these two lines. Once we do this, for the height of the front view, from here to it is 60, so we'll measure from here to here 60 and then we'll construct horizontal line and then for the space between the front and the top, we'll give 20 and then we'll construct one horizontal line and then finally the remaining part will be 50. So once you get that, this will be the place of the front view, this one is for top view and then this one will be for the right side view. Once you get this, the front view will be constructed over this, so let's just construct all the views now. We can construct a cutting play line to separate the views in this way. So for the front view, we can place the first surface, that means surface 1, this L shape. To construct that, from here to here we know that is 50 so from here to here we'll measure 50 millimeter and then construct one vertical line and then the other one it has the height of 20 millimeter as indicated here from here to it is 20 millimeter so from here to here we'll measure 20 millimeter and then connect one horizontal line so we can project this future and then the other one for the length part of this part from here to here its width is, is 20 so from here to here we'll measure 20 and then construct one vertical line once you get that we can construct this L shape in this way. So this is the L shape of the part having this dimension. So this is just on the front view side. And then the other one, this part, that means the second surface will be projected. So this surface is just a rectangle. So simply it has a common boundary at this portion. So we can measure from here to 30. So once we construct one vertical line firing from 30 millimeter, we can construct this rectangle. This is surface two. And for surface 3, the remaining or the last part will be surface 3. So we can construct this part. So for the front view, we construct 3 surfaces. The remaining surface is surface 4. And then for surface 4, from here to here, it has a width of 60 millimeters. So we'll measure that 60 and construct one vertical line. And then once we do that, its height is 45 from the horizontal from this line. So from here to here, we'll measure 45 and then they'll connect at this point so you can construct the remaining part. So this is just surface 4. For the circular part, we'll construct it later, just construct the other normal surfaces. And then when we come to the top view, simply we have the horizontal measurement. That means the width is measurement is just projected from the top view, so we don't need to measure it. Instead of that, the depths will be measured. And then let's construct this inverted L shape. That means painted with a red color. So to construct this, we know that it is depth is from here to here. The overall depth is as known as 50. So the remaining part is given as 40 here. So 50 minus 40 will be 10. That means from here to here, it will be 10 millimeters. So from here to here, we'll measure 10 millimeters and project one horizontal line in this way. And then the other thing, once we finished it, we can construct this shape because we know its width is 20. We can just connect from the front view. So simply you can construct this object. So finally you will have this surface. So once we do this, let's just construct surface six. Surface six is just the remaining parts of this part. So we can connect this rectangle. Finally, you'll get this part. You don't need to measure even. And then for the seventh surface, that means which is painted with a blue color here. This is, as you see, this is an inverted U shape. So to construct it, we know all the dimensions of the object from the horizontal, except this layout, this horizontal depth. That means the positions of this part. Where did that position? Now from this part to this, this is 20 millimeter. 20 millimeter is given. That means from the tip of this top view, 20 millimeter horizontal will be projected in this way. Once we do that, we can construct it because the view from the front view previously were from here to here. That means this surface, the second surface were here. So the surfaces will be projected in this way. So finally, you will have this part. For the right side view, if you are looking over here, we will see this inverted L shape here. So we can construct it first and then later on we'll just construct the other one. Let's construct this surface, that means surface 8. 
So to construct that, from here to here, we have a depth of 50, so we don't need to measure it again. From here to here, there is 45. That means the extension from the front view can be used here. That means this point. For the depth of this lens, we know that is 10 previously. That means 50 minus 40 is 10. So from here to here, we'll measure 10 and then we'll project a vertical line in this way. Once we get that, we can project this surface. So the construction of the surface over the right side view will be this one. For surface 9, it is just a rectangle and then it will be placed on the top of surface 8. It will be just constructed in this way. We know all the dimensions, simply you can connect it and then this rectangle can be the views from the right side view for the surface 9. For surface 10, it is just a rectangle and then its dimension will be from here to here. Everything is known, you can just connect that and then you'll get this part. So the multi-view drawings of the given object can be constructed in this way. So the remaining part is just the circular part which is just placed on surface 4. To construct the circle, we have to put it in center first. So the center of the circle is given here from this surface to this one. It is given as Tioni. That means from here to we will measure Tioni and then project one vertical line here. For the vertical part, from here to here, it's given as 10. So from here to here, we'll measure 10 and then we'll project this line. And then this is just center points of the circle. And then once we get that, the radius of the circle is given as 6 millimeters. So we can arrange our compass and then we can construct the circle in this way. Once you construct the circle here, it is projection on the other view will be just placed in this way. From the top view, this part will be a hidden part because it is covered with surface 5 as you just look over here, it will cover that part. So it will be a hidden line. So the depth is 10 millimeter, it has no question because the hole is created on the 10 millimeter thickness of material. So it will be over the surface and then we can construct it with a hidden line to indicate that. And then for the right side view, we can construct into this way, you can project. Normally we don't need to measure it, we can just project from this. Once you get that, the line can be constructed in this way so this one will be a hidden line but we are not finishing all the thing we have to just put the center line to indicate that this is a circular part so for the center don't forget to construct this center line and then for the other one for the views of that circle you have to also show one center line in this way so this is the final multi-view drawings of this object. I hope you get most information related to the constructing of a multi-view drawing with a first angle projection system. But what will be with a third angle projection system? If this is a third angle projection system, their places will be changed. But views will be the same. That means the front view will be here and the top view will be on the top of the front view. The right side view will be placed on the right of the front view. So the third angle projection system will use and then even the standard symbol of the third angle projection at this one. If you look at this, this is a first angle projection. This is for a third angle projection system. In a first angle projection system, the top view is placed on the bottom of the front and then the right side view is placed on the left of the front view. If you want more exercises with a solution manual, you might join our platform via the link attached in the video description. There are plenty of exercises with their own solution manual. It will really very helpful for you. Thank you for watching us and then see you soon.